Hello and welcome once again to Marty's Matchbox and Makeovers. Today I am going to do an unboxing of this box and it's rather heavy. I'm very intrigued as to what's in it and I'm sure you are too. Uh, a little bit of history about this box. Um, when we moved in two and a half years ago, we bought all our stuff from our old house and we had a storage shed and anything that wasn't immediately required we put into the storage shed and I was in there the other day just rummaging around and I had to find this box and I completely forgotten about it and I'm somewhat embarrassed to say but according to my book of record of packages that I've received this package number 213 uh, arrived in my possession on the 14th of June 2020 so it's kind of three years ago and uh, I haven't got around to open it yet. Well today's the day. So the centre of this parcel is a C Bartlett and he comes from South Australia so I shall be putting a pin in the map at the end of this uh, video. I can't believe I've had this for three years. Oh, there's a letter. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <clears throat> Dear Marty, a box a little closer to home for a change. Not much of a challenge, I am sorry to say. They appear in mostly A-grade condition. Oh, that sounds interesting. I thought you might like them anyway, definitely. I collected them over the last few months from a local auction site. The first thing I bought was inspired by you. It was a box of bits of models of yesteryear. Actually, loose bits in brackets. I managed to assemble the Rolls Royce out of it all. It's easy to spot, it's the one with the rolling back seat. On completion of that model, my old shaky hands and head said, that's enough, <laughs> that's enough of that then. Hence the box, enjoy, keep Sal, or run Kevin over with one of them. <laughs> and uh, regards, Charles Bartlett from Christy Downs in South Australia. Well, Charles, as I said before, I shall definitely be putting a pin in the map for you. And um, I've got his email there, so I should be sending him an email to alert him to the fact that I've opened his box after three years. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about his old and shaky hands. <laughs> I do hope that Charles is still with us and can enjoy this video. Now let's get into it. Oh wow, this, oh my, uh, my goodness, this is brimming over with models, probably models of yesteryear, ah, oh, oh my goodness, this is going to be so good, I think that these are going to be going straight into my display cabinets, if this is anything to go by, have a look at that. That is an amazingly well preserved model of yesteryear. And if this is anything to go by, this is going to be an amazing unboxing. So let's get into it. Okay, what I've done is I have gone out and got a little fold up table. Okay, it's getting late in the day too, so the lights fade. So I need to crack on with this. Uh, wow, I should bring this over and put it on something. I know this thing over here. Just think it's so this one here, first up, was the Renault uh, number two yes, models of yesteryear made in England by Leslie. And uh, I seem to remember that. <laughs> I know I did an ashtray makeover once. It's up there on the shelf. And um, it reminded me of one that my dad had, and I actually think that this Renault may have been 
or an ashtray or a pin dish or a coin dish uh, that my dad had but I can't be sure so let me know in the comments if that model was featured on one of the um, coin tray uh, novelty items anyway let's have a look second one out of the box is the Carlsberg Pilsner uh, branded model of yesteryear um, beautiful looking vehicle it's got some interesting details under the bottom there including a spare wheel which I've seldom seen in any matchbox models I've, I've owned so that's something unusual and you know what's unusual about it you wouldn't see it sitting there like that you would not realize there was a spare wheel in the back there uh, okay so Carlsberg Pilsner um, Ford is it uh, um, Ford A A A4 A or something anyway that's uh, Perfect condition, beautiful, Carlsberg, Pilsner, ah, oh, nice detail, the uh, the running plates there. That's a very nice little feature there, I've never seen that before on a vehicle. Now there's a second branded one here, again a beer brand, Bex, I think is beer from Bremen. Bremen, is that, is that in Germany? I'm not sure, probably would be, because German beer is quite common. This is a 1926 Model T, T, Ford. I wonder what the difference between the T and the TT is. Um, don't know. Um, looks like there may have been a little bit of glue or something spilt on the back there, which has made the, I don't know if that's plastic or metal. I just sort of like made that go a little bit funny on the back there. Other than that, it looks beautiful. Could be a production, uh, error of course uh, that looks really nice i like it on that stand as well the base now please if you know answer me this did that have like a plastic box over it perhaps because there's two holes there that look like they might have received tabs for like a dust cover or something um there's another one here on a base again without i'm assuming the dust cover and this one here is another beer one it's castle main 4x which is a Australian beer, in actual fact, yes, it says on the back there, Queensland, Australia. I've got a number plate there too. Uh, could run that through the Australian Victorian, ah, uh, Queensland database to see if that number plate is still current, uh, which could be interesting. I might do that afterwards. Uh, brewed since 1878, so lovely looking. These are really nice collectible vehicles, I can't. Thank uh, Charles enough for taking the time to send them to me. It's just mind blowing, really. Um, he's obviously collected them and taken care of them. This one here is absolutely pristine, from what I can see. There's got a mark on it. Red Crown gasoline. It says on there California. Uh, and once again. This looks like it is a Ford Model T vehicle. Uh, it's made in England, which is good. Uh, not like anything wrong with it, but everything that works. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, and what can I say? It's, I mean, Charles said that he thinks that they're A, a grade. That one there, maybe it needs the box to be A+, plus, but in my mind, that's an A+. Plus. Now, this here is very unusual uh, once again matchbox uh, model of yesteryear made in england ford model a uh, motor sales quality cars 24-hour wrecking service i do love the fact that they have perfectly matched the color of the body with the plastic resin that they've used to make the wheels i mean i don't know how hard that is because i don't know the science behind it I'm not in that industry but to get the orange of the wheels to match that paint must be quite difficult, I would imagine. Not a fan of this big plastic bumper bar. Just looks a little bit, sort of spoils the model. Uh, without it, I think it would look a little bit better. Um, this back end here, the, the actual hook has got some flashing on it as well, which ordinarily you would have assumed would be removed. However, an error in production does not make this worthless. In actual fact, it could make it 
collectible because it could be one of a kind. Uh, beautiful looking model, but I do like it. Another one coming out here, we have uh, uh, Motor 100 Century of World Motoring, Silverstone Circuit, England. Okay. So now this is a nice model. Okay, it's, uh, it's got some beautiful gilt, uh, gilded window frame, headlights, side lights and, and grill. However, what lets it down is that the roof, for some reason, don't know what it would be has got some kind of imperfection in it. Now whether or not it's caused by time or damage through uh, misuse, I don't know. What I don't understand is why that bit there would be damaged, but this piece is perfect. So it could be it could have come from the manufacturer like that, you never know. Very strange. Uh, if anyone's seen anything like that before, let me know. Um, now, there's two of these, um, and they are the same branded uh, Lake Goldsmith Australia Mining Company. It's a, it's a steam truck. They are both steam trucks. Uh, Moulds of yesteryear, Matchbox, um, where are these ones made, I wonder? It says made in and then it's hidden. It's hidden down the bottom somewhere. Let me have a look. Oh, I've got this. Aha! Oh, a secret weapon here. Check this out. It comes all the way over here, which is pretty cool. It's like a little... Oh, it's not plugged in! <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. Right. Uh, let's have a look here. Oh, that's so much better. Yes, made in England. 1918 Atkinson Steam Wagon. There you go. Sand and gravel deliveries. Uh, branded in uh, Australia, like I said before, Lake Goldsmith. I don't know where that is, but I have to look that one up. But there's two of those, and they are both uh, equally in good condition. So there's two of those. They look great. I hope this isn't putting some glare on the camera. So this one is the Swan Brewery. Now we've got a bit of a theme happening here. What have we got? We've got uh, Carlsberg, Beck's, Castle Maine, and now the Swan Brewery. I wonder if Charles has got some kind of, some secret he'd like to share. Maybe not. Um, this is another steam wagon. It's uh, great detail underneath there, although it's plastic underneath. Metal on top, I think. Plastic underneath. Uh, shame, because Matchbox was renowned for its all-metal vehicles at one stage there. Now that, oh, this one's made in China. Um, Matchbox Collectibles, it says, models of yesteryear. Uh, Atkinson Steam Wagon. Uh, nice model. Uh, really beautiful decals with the, the gold framing on them. Back door, that would have been an effort putting that on and getting it exactly right. Uh, it's got a plastic roof on it. Uh, very similar. Like it's like these, but slightly different scale, or is it? No, it's probably the same scale. The cabin is the same size, but the body is different. Um, another steam truck. This one's Hovis. Hovis entices and suffices, which I think Hovis was a bread, a famous bread, wasn't it? Um, they probably designed sliced bread. Who knows? Oh. This looks like a steam engine in the front of it. Look. It actually looks like a steam engine <laughs> from the front. Quite a nice model, really. Uh, limited edition, possibly, because it's branded for Hovis. Hope you can't hear my stupid dog Finn out there barking and spoiling things. So this is a yesteryear number 27. Uh, quite like it. Again, they've matched the colour of the roof. The canopy and the wheels together to make a nice sort of balanced colour scheme. A few more to come. Okay, this one here, Pickford's storage and removal. And uh, comparing it to this one, they look like they're identical models. Very, if not very, very similar. So this one was the Hovis. This one is Pickford's removals and storage. And in actual fact, the roof you can see the roof has got the same uh, stress stress patterns in the tarp being pulled taut 
as this one. So they've used the same moulding for both vehicles, just a different colour. Uh, they are very, very attractive models though. I think out of the two, I'd probably prefer the Pickfords because it's got the contrasting colour of the chassis and the wheels. Makes it look a little bit more special to me. Uh, now, here's another one, but this is slightly different. On this one, this is a Fife's Banana. Fife's Banana is our best, it says. It's got an actual wheel feature on there, which is great, which is, uh, represents the front drive wheel, I think, that drives this chain to the rear wheels that powers it along. Um, quite nice looking model, very detailed. There's a bit of play in that front piece. But you notice here, this steam engine's uh, very similar to... Uh, most of these steam trucks had the, from, from what I can see, had the boiler in the, the cabin to keep the toes of the driver warm. This one here has the boiler outside of the wagon. So I don't know whether this is earlier than that one or later. Let's have a look here. This is... Uh, it doesn't actually say, it just says a Yorkshire steam wagon. It doesn't say what year it represents. Uh, but I'm thinking, hmm, yeah, I'm thinking that, that this type of boiler setup is probably the, the later version of this. Because this all looks a little bit too exposed there, doesn't it, for the driver. Almost like a steam engine, but it's not a steam engine. Now, um, yeah, moving on, uh, what have we got here? That's right, Heinz, Heinz 57 varieties. Um, not only that, we've also got, uh, let's have a look here. There is a second one identical to the first, <laughs> except that this one here, was a looks like it might have been a Friday afternoon job because there's uh, some paint imperfections on the roof like there's a bit of dust that's on there that might not have slipped through quality control however maybe quality control was not that stringent but uh, they're the same model but this one is slightly better than that one and once again as I said the imperfection in fact if you look on the front there See the front grills there? This one's got a imperfection in the front grill as well. So this one could be a collectible, you never know, because it, because of its imperfections. It makes it r unique, literally. Uh, whereas one that's perfect is one of many, many perfect ones, if that makes sense. Uh, regardless, I love them both. I think they are both amazingly beautiful. Uh, pieces of art, really. That's what they are. Heinz. What is that on the top there? It looks like a cucumber. Heinz? Cucumbers? I thought they were famous for their beans. Beans means Heinz. Maybe they did cucumbers or is that a green pepper? Anybody? Fill me in. 57 varieties. Heinz? I oh, must have had 57 different products. Maybe the pickle was one of them. This one here, um, Arctic Ice Cream Company Polar Brand Ice Cream. Polar Brand Ice Cream. Lovely logo with the um, the gold. Oh, actually it's a beautiful model. It's got gold bits all over it that just make it pop. And um, it's the first time I've seen this like curved roof over the cabin. And this sloping, almost modern style streamlined uh, front end of the engine cowling there. What is this model? It's a Mack truck. Oh, it's a 1920 Mack truck. This one, however, is made in Macau. Uh, I must, I've often seen things made in Macau, but I'm not too sure where it is. I must put that up on my map later. Um, when I put uh, Charles's pin in the map, I should try and find Macau and show it to you. Uh, very nice model. Beautiful wheels, rather unique, I think. I haven't seen any wheels like that before. With the, uh, like a Comstar. I used to have a Honda Super Dream when I was younger. I had a Comstar alloy 
wheel on them rather than spokes this motorbike and uh, this looks very similar to those wheels um, what else was I going to say um, that's pretty much it <laughs> it just looks really nice oh yeah the colour on the roof there nice touch green cream and this tan roof like, who comes up with this, this stuff it's just a beautiful thing isn't it um, now here's something unusual it's a I don't know if it's a matchbox it is matchbox models of yesteryear that says Y9 on it okay so which one is the Y9 that says Y9 on it too so there we go so that clicks into there and makes for like a little sort of diorama there with the cobbled street and the brickwork uh, garage front and what does it say oh goodness me uh -huh. there's a little sign on the door it says royal society for the prevention of cruelty to animals please slacken name rain going up the hill or remove it altogether does that mean anything to anyone I'm not too sure what that means um so obviously well which one's the y9 oh my goodness now now i'm going to find the y9 just uh listen to some music for the time being until i find which one it is there we go y9 simplex now that matches that one in there so that must go on there like that Strange because it kind of looks like a tow. I imagine a tow truck would look better on there because it's like in front of the garage. You know, well, that's me. Uh, but yeah, it definitely says the Y9. So Y9 it is. That goes on there. And um, I'm assuming that the holes in the base line up somehow with the holes in the model. Do they? Uh, hmm. Debatable. Uh, no, they don't. <laughs> Okay, well, anyone can explain that to me. That would be good. Uh, it's all falling apart now again. Okay, moving on. Ah, uh, what have we got here? Um, um, models of yesteryear, Rolls Royce 1912. Beautiful little model. Uh, Y7. Uh, oh, there's a cobweb in there. Is that cobweb? No, it could be a strand of glue. Aha, uh -huh, this could be, is this the Rolls Royce? It is the Rolls Royce. This must be the one that um, Charles mentioned in his letter that they had the wrong seat in the back, possibly. But I think there's a strand of glue in there that may have been left behind when he glued it in, perhaps. This is definitely a Rolls Royce. And look at this. This wheel here has dried out over time, probably been sitting in somebody's window seal. And... Uh, the rubber's shrunk, and where it's shrunk, it's broken on the weakest point there. I've seen that a few times in some some models. Uh, what's this one here? Okay. Trailways, Dallas, bus. Uh, Days Gone, it says, made in England by Lido. Lido. I have very little knowledge of Lido. I have very little knowledge of most things. Uh, nice looking model bus, though. It's all... This, is it all plastic or is that might have a metal metal body unless it's all plastic um, and interestingly it's got a uh, stars and stripes on it now correct me if I'm wrong on this side look they've mirrored these stars and stripes now I seem to recall I could be wrong when I did the space shuttle it had uh, stars and stripes flags on it and I thought that the mirror image, I did a little bit of research, I think at the time, and it was about the mirror image of flags. And when they're displayed on something, they have to look the correct way. So like on this model, that would be correct. That would be incorrect, but not sure. Could be, if this was made in America, maybe they would have done that differently. Because it's made in England, maybe they didn't know about that sort of standard uh, practice. 
Uh, enough waffle. This one here, oh, this is a beautiful steam engine. Hey ho, come to the fair. Oh, I love this model. It is so beautifully detailed. So much gold on it. It looks amazing. Oh God, there's something about steam engines. Uh, when I was a lad, you know, 10 or something, I went to the Basingstoke Common one weekend when I was off school and there was a steam engine fair and all these things were there in there, you know, there's a lot of chuffing going on and, you know, I'm not talking, you know, you know, I'm talking chuffing of engines because there were steam engines and, you know, uh, I don't know, it, it, uh, it sort of embedded something in my brain and I just love steam engines, look at that, it's, a, it's just a, it's a fantastic thing, all that gold and you know, just like the real thing, they're really over the top, like with their, uh, you know, colours and, and decorations and that. Anyway, sorry to uh, draw this out. Uh, not long to go. We've got a, another half dozen or so. Uh, we've got another beer branded model here, uh, Charles. Um, Low and brow. Lovely, lovely model. Now, interestingly, I've got some of these barrels, but I never knew where they came from. Now I do. Um... Yeah, I must see if I've got another one of these models somewhere, but this one here is in perfect condition. It is absolutely beautiful. And it's the model of yesteryear Crosley. Um, made, this particular model was made in 1973, so it's got a bit of age to it, the model. Um, great thing, lovely colours, lovely gold, black, red, brown, tan, blue, even burgundy seats. There's just so much going on. It's a, a beautiful thing. <laughs> I must not say that word again because I keep saying it, but it's true. Uh, sprats. What's sprats? Wheat meat. Is it dog food or what? Uh, dog. Hang on. There's a sticker on the door. I can't read it. What does it say? Dog foods. Yeah, it does say dog foods. It makes sense because the word sprats is like, uh, looks like a, a fox terrier, if I'm not mistaken. It's a number on the front of the, the grill, which is almost unreadable. I guess it's supposed to be a license plate. I think it is a license plate. It's the same number on the back, 6L3127. Uh, interestingly, that this model of yesteryear has Perspex windscreen in it. And uh, that's new to me. I don't think I've ever seen one. Although having said that, Instantly I see another one. Uh, this one here. Well, what do you know? They're the same bloody car. <laughs> Just different colours. How amazing. It's even got the, yes, it's got the spare wheel on the side too. Well, there you go. So some of the SDS do have Perspex windscreens and I never knew that. Now, moving on. Um, what have we got here? I'll, I'll take, start taking them out two at a time, I think. Blue circle. Um... Looks like the Shand Mason, but it's not, I bet. No, it's an Atkinson, 1918 Atkinson steam wagon. Looks very, very, very similar to that Shand Mason one I did over the other week. The blue one, if you haven't seen it, look it up. It's a beautiful little uh, yesteryear makeover I did. Uh, and this is another beautiful model. I'm um, just thinking, no, oh, I must have imagined it. I thought I had one of those already, but... There you go. Um, this one here is My Bread Baking Company. It's got that same sort of chassis underneath. Is that the same? I believe it is. So they've, yeah, Matchbox are masters of this. They could rebrand something with decals, different colours, different wheels, and they could com make a completely new model out of something that they'd already made. Um, unfortunately, this one here, I've just noticed, it's got a broken wheel on it. Now, whether or not that's repairable is doubtful. I'd have to pull it off and glue the individual spokes back together again if I haven't got one available. However, it's a, a lovely looking car. Uh, delivery van, my bread. Uh, right, what else have we got here? Now, this is, look at this thing. This looks like a bus, but it's not a bus. It's a huge pan technicon. It's these like furniture removal trucks where they've got the extra space over the cabin. This one's for delivering biscuits. So must have been the mother load of biscuits in there. Uh, biscuits of real goodness. 
London and this is a model of yesteryear made in Macau again Y31 doesn't really say what it is oh yeah there 19 oh, 1933 Morris oh it says it there Pan Pan Technicon there you go I was right <laughs> I swear <laughs> I remembered that God knows where from so there you go they must have had a lot of biscuits hmm plastic top but lovely red uh, design lovely red and gold and black red and gold and black always seem to go together it's very regal I feel uh, what have we got here this looks like um, a Rolls spiker like a spiker <laughs> 1904 I was gonna say Rolls Royce but then again all the vehicles of that era looked similar this one I think I suspect has been repainted although I can't prove it the yellow paint just doesn't do it for me and it's over the steering wheel kind of looks a little bit like it's been painted I would suggest uh, in fact I'm almost 100% sure it has been mind you they did a good job of painting it they didn't get anything on the wheels maybe they took the wheels off there's no sign of it there um, interesting little vehicle uh, because it's been reworked it's kind of lost some of its charm I think um, doesn't have quite enough detail in it so uh, never mind might even do a makeup on this one uh, what have we got here Commonwealth Games Scotland services oh this is a Days Gone model again by Lido wasn't there was one there wasn't there Days Gone Lido can't remember which one it was oh, that one that was it so these two are from the same uh, set if you like Days Gone Days Gone uh, this one was American this one is Scottish Scottish Bank Scotland Commonwealth no, sorry Scottish Scotland Commonwealth Games mm. uh, branded okay different um, what have we got here is that the same as that uh, no see what I mean about them looking similar look at that almost identical at a glance but the grill is different and this one here has got like a searchlight beam on the front <laughs> I know it's not it's probably a radio a modern uh, older version of a radio or something I don't know uh, so this one here the green one reminds me it's a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost now number 15 models of yesteryear now I think that this one may have been on an ashtray or a coin dish or a pin dish whatever that my dad had but I think it had red seats uh, remember I did one uh, here it is and I thought it was the same as what my father had but um, thinking about it oh it's so close it could have been this one who would know it's so similar uh, moving on, we have three more to go, so I'll get them out in quick succession. We have, uh, oh, this one here. Aha! Yes, I did this one the other week. Uh, the Packard uh, Laundelay or whatever. Laundelay. Yeah, the number 11. Do you remember that? I did that one the other day, and now it's good to have another one. Um, almost in perfect condition. Uh, not a lot wrong with a couple of chips at the top, but it's good to see how close I compare it with what I did later see how close I came to um, making it look original um, here we have Carnation Farm products model of yesteryear Ford model 7 18 12 uh, interesting sort of a um, very similar to this model here it's got that uh, liquid cartridge tank on the back there uh, different roofs, different wheels, but very similar models. Uh, once again, see this little ridge here, they've, they've, they've changed it up and just made two different models, completely different from similar parts. They're very clever at doing that. The last one today is the Rosella um, Promotional, it says on the bottom. Model by Lido England. So Rosella, we have Rosellas in Australia, uh, multicolored parrots, 
and because this is red, it reminds me instantly of Rosella tomato sauce, which is ever present in our food cupboard because I can't have anything without tomato sauce on it. Uh, ask my wife, she'll tell you. Um, I think it's because as you get older, your, your senses, you know, your hearing, your sight, your taste, everything starts to sort of dumb down a bit. And I can't have anything without Rosella tomato sauce. So uh, that's what this vehicle reminds me of. And uh, I must say, you can't fault it. This is A plus condition. It is perfect. Minus the packaging, of course. But you can't get any better than that. So that's the finished. That's that's the end of the unboxing. So how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 30 models or is it 31 and to think it's been sitting in my storage shed for the last couple of years is just um i'm just what can i say i should have opened it sooner i didn't but i have now and i hope you'll agree that this is a magnificent set of models from yesteryear and uh, I can only say thank you so much to Charles from South Australia uh, for spending the money, taking the time to package them up and send them off to me. And a very, very generous donation to my channel and my collection. And as I said before, I shall be getting a new cabinet now. It's been on the cards for a while. My other cabinet's becoming full, but I'm definitely going to have to order a new cabinet and uh, these will be in that cabinet in a special char in a special Charles Bartlett uh, section. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what can I say? They're just a magnificent set of cars, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing them as much as I have. So, until next time, this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeover saying thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and recommend to your friends. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> forgot to put the bin in. I almost, I almost forgot. I've got to put the pin in the map. So, uh, this is for Charles Bartlett from Christy Downs in South Australia. Here you are, Charles. This is for you. I'm hoping it's about there. So thank you again, Charles. Um, I hope you enjoy this video. I shall send you an email shortly and let you know it's up and running. And to the rest of you, thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.